What is going on everyone? This is Cedric Skysetti and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I've got another special friend in the house. For many of you guys, this is the first time you're seeing him, but he is the Austrian mukbang king. <laughs> All right, and so without me saying anything else, I'll let him introduce himself. Hey, hey guys, I'm Mika from Mika in Korea and I'm from Austria. <laughs> awesome. So we want to talk about the foreigner experience. I love highlighting the experiences and the stories of different people who are living in Korea, especially the foreigners, because everyone has a different experience. And so I find that Mika is one of my friends who's actually not from the States or from Canada. He's from a whole other country that their native language isn't even English. And so I think his, his take on this topic would be very interesting. And so before we get into it, if you guys are new to this channel, my name is Cedric Sky Seti, and this channel is about Korean culture and my experiences here as a black and Korean man. And so if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. So Mika, you have been living in Korea for how long? Uh, I moved to Korea uh, three years ago. Three years ago, wow, already. But I'm coming to Korea since 2010. On the tourist visa, I was coming here regularly and then, yeah. Okay. My wife and I decided to settle down here. Okay, okay. So this is going to be an interesting story. Okay, so <laughs> so you are from Austria. Exactly. Right. So can you tell us a little bit about your background and your roots? Uh, yeah, like um, originally um, my parents are from Poland, mm -hmm. but they settled down in Austria. And basically I've been born in Austria, born and raised. And yeah, like 10 years ago I came to Australia to take a language class. And in that language course was my today's wife, oh, Sujin. Okay. So, and yeah, and we got married also like three years ago. So right. like after eight years of long distance relationship, we decided to tie the knot and yeah, that's it. Okay, and where is your wife originally from? Since this, you met her yeah. in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Since I'm like, she's Korean, otherwise we wouldn't be here. Right. So basically she is the reason why I came to Korea. Okay, awesome. So. You met your wife in Australia and you guys were dating for quite some time. Yes. Long distance, right? Because you were Long going distance. back and forth yes. from Australia she also uh, came to, to Austria. Austria yeah. Right. And she went back to Korea, right? Yes. She was in Korea. Yeah. So you guys had this long distance relationship. By the way, guys, uh, Mika and his wife, they're like the cutest couple ever. They're my favorite <laughs> couple here in Korea. And I'm actually going to do a separate video very soon uh, with them telling their story. So it's going to be really cute. So I don't want to focus too much on yeah. the love story, right? We'll tell that in another video. But that is a big reason why Mika is here in Korea. Exactly. Right. So you've been in Korea for three years, just about now. What has your experience overall, how has it been like? Good. Good. And interesting. Okay. For me, it was... You know, like, I was like kind of trapped in this daily life routine. You know, it's like everything is repeating over and over again. And you don't even, how you say, you don't feel like time is passing. You know, months pass, years pass and nothing changes, right? Right. And you just live your life and you even don't notice. And for me, Korea is like a, like an adventure, mm -hmm. an ongoing permanent adventure. Like everything I do in Korea, it's always like, I don't know what to expect. But it's always fun to do. Right, so everything's just new. Everything is new. Right, so even three years in, do you find things still to be kind of like fresh and you're discovering new things? Still, still. Yeah. Like since I still struggle with my Korean, so for me, still going to the supermarket or like trying to do something by myself is always a challenge. Right. But I never know what will happen on that day. Right, right. Yeah, I know you've been working on your Korean. So speaking of challenges and speaking mm. of you working on your Korean, uh, because I'm pretty sure that's going to be one of the answers to this question. But what have, what were some of your, ch or what are some of your challenges that you face today? Besides learning Korean? Or you can include learning Korean. You can talk I about that or you can I, avoid that topic if you I want. I guess for <laughs> every foreigner, the biggest task I think is to learn Korean. I guess you can't live in a foreign country without learning, I said, the local language. Right. I think this is impossible. And I think like, it's no criticism here, but I think like we Westerners have a double standard. Like, I don't know about Americans, mm -hmm. but in Austria, they're very strict with foreigners. Mm -hmm. Like if they come to Austria, we really say like, you have to learn German. So otherwise, why should you be here? Right. But foreigners here, they feel like so easy going not to learn Korean. And as I'm always asking like, why do we have like this 
double standard, right? Like in your country, you're demanding from the foreigners learning your language, but in Korea, you feel like totally comfortable not learning it. Right. And then like kind of expecting from the Koreans to speak English with you. So I That's see this. That's a very good point. I see that too. I see that too. Yeah, I feel like uh, because Korea is very accommodating, especially in certain areas and in bigger cities, especially very accommodating to English speakers. Mm. I think us foreigners, we we get really spoiled. Yeah, spoiled. You know, we get very sure. spoiled. But yeah, I think it's very similar in the United States as well. Because I don't know, growing up, I just kind of remember, you know, if there was a kid or somebody that I knew that couldn't speak English very well, I would either make fun of them or you know I would just kind of look down on them because they couldn't speak. The language, but then again, you know, you flip that and mm -hmm. you come to Korea. It's almost like you're you're comfortable with your English language, obviously, and you're wanting to mm -hmm. speak to these people, and you're expecting them to understand you. You're expecting them to communicate with you through your native language. But I think that's very unfair because you're in another culture. So I see that too. And also, like you mentioned, that point, like making fun, right? Like right. in Austria, it's the same, right? Like a foreigner tries to speak German, and he speaks it bad, right? Like people start to laugh and mm -hmm. make fun of you and I think it's so wrong but in Korea like you try a little bit like you try to put this Korean sentence together people are so happy and appreciating you trying mm. so this is something that encourages me it's a very good point yeah yeah you just say 안녕하세요 and they're like wow you can speak like, Korean very well like 한국말 잘하시네요 like no no 잘못해요 and this makes like wow you're good right right that <laughs> but is then the conversation ends yeah. <laughs> what are the top three things that you love about Korea, your three favorite things when you think about Korea? Like first thing, like the the culture, like I think like the, how you say, the respect for the elderly mm -hmm. and like there are like some rules in society. I think like Koreans are extremely well behaving compared to Europe, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Uh, then as a second point, the broad food, food how you say, culture, right. like it's Unlimited. There are so many, how you say, so many oh, dishes, right. right? And and food varieties. And this is I'm running like a, at the moment like Mika and Korea is very food based. Right. So like concentrated on eating food. And like although I shot nearly 60 episodes, I'm still not running out of Korean dishes. And I'm, I'm not even touching the seafood side yet. Right. right. And uh, let me let me cut you off real quick. So Mika is talking about his YouTube channel where he is. <laughs> He's constantly doing mukbangs, mm. right? And he's going to different places. And so, uh, again, I'm going to link that down below. So make sure you check it out. <laughs> so I just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that. <laughs> yeah, so, and besides food, third point. Whoa. So you've got culture, you've got the food. food. It's generally life in Korea. Mm -hmm. Like, life in Korea is so much more fun and entertaining. Like... It's not comparable with the European lifestyle. Like, for example, in Vienna, everything feels static now. Okay. Like the whole nightlife or like shopping, it feels slow compared to Korea. And it depends if you like it or not, but I really enjoy the fast pace of Korea. Like everything is like bali bali. Right. 24 seven is like, if you like it, you are at the right spot. Last question, Mika. Okay. What advice would you give to any foreigner that's currently living in Korea or mm. anyone who is thinking about either living in Korea in the future as a foreigner or just coming to visit? What mm. advice would you give them? Like, just open up your heart. Like, it sounds simple, but I think lots of people don't do. They still close and just try to adapt. I think like just by simple things, like trying to learn some Korean words, you know, trying to local food, you win already like 80% ahead because I've seen so many foreigners like they don't try to learn Korean, right? They want to eat Western food in Korea. It's right. like you don't do that. So I think if you just do these two things, you're already well ahead of the others. Beautiful. Very good advice. I hope so. <laughs> I don't know. But if you have better advice, like... We Leave can. it in the comments. <laughs> yes. Right, right. So I think that's it. So thank you so much for sharing about your experience as a foreigner here in Korea. Again, guys, make sure you subscribe to his channel. His channel is very fun. His, him <laughs> and his wife, they're, they're a team and uh, they make very good content. Again, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. 
and also comment below what you thought about anything that Mika said and again if you have any advice for foreigners that are living or going to live in Korea leave it in the comments below all right thanks for having me oh no problem man it was really fun it's very fun <laughs> as always all right guys we'll see you guys in the next video and remember to always seize the day peace <laughs> <laughs>